share some things that are important when working with a pickup band. So to, to define that for the for the listeners, a pickup band or musicians you have not played with before, you've come into an area and you've made some calls to some friends in the area, who's, who's the guys I should hook up with? You've been doing law for a long time now, you probably know a lot of guys in all these different countries now, but um, can you tell us a little bit of some of the do's and the don'ts of, of working with a pickup band? Um, definitely keep it simple. Um, and I will try to set the song up actually with playing a line. Mm -hmm. So instead of, um, because I mean, there's, it happens all the time where I'm walking out on the bandstand with guys that I don't even, even know their name sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, no rehearsal, nothing. And um, I'll tell everybody the key, except for the drummer, <laughs> but I'll tell everybody the key and then I'll set it up. And um, a lot of times, like in, uh, um, if you're not, using the same common language if they you're playing in a foreign country they might not even understand uh, English that well or even uh, people that do understand English you know you're on the stage it's loud it's excited you go E and uh, they might have heard B or C mm -hmm. so I don't just like count it in and start playing uh -huh. a lot of times I'll noodle around or make a little noise on the harp mm -hmm. so these guys can hear it yeah. they can find it yeah, you know, oh, he's in this key. Mm -hmm. So before setting it up, sometimes I'll go out there and... And then I'll uh, reiterate, E, come in on the four chord. And then I'll just set up the song. Like that. You know, or okay, just, uh, yeah, or just go, uh, uh, blues, I'm going to start on a five, fall in when it feels good to you. So I try to get the uh, backup band to go with the same philosophy that when in doubt, lay out. Mm -hmm. And if, um, I always tell guys that if you're a little uncertain, if it's like going to be a quick change, because a lot of times I don't even know, sometimes I'll just start playing in a key and then I decide what I'm going to sing once the groove starts happening and um, so a lot of times I'll tell the band uh, just if, if you if you don't feel it where I'm going just stay on the one mm -hmm. just stay on the one because if I change on top of it it doesn't matter but if you start thinking that oh this is where it's supposed to change mm -hmm. nine times out of ten that's probably not where it's going to change well, there's good examples of that in Europe too like when Sonny Boy when he's backed by those uh, I can't remember the film but there's two German uh, musicians an upright bass player and a guitarist and Sonny Boy's playing and, and you can hear plain as day where the changes need to be but these guys are sticking to a rote 12 bar form and just yeah never lock on them. yeah so it's uh it, it, it's best to play it safe and uh a little side note too. See that 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 opening where you played on the one and the band was supposed to meet on the four. You didn't bring this up, but you played the bass line to give them the feel as well. That, I'll do uh, that a lot. That's a common you know, Chicago blues bass line. So that's that's kind of nice because you're actually playing something that sounds good on the harp, but it it's also the line you would like them to play. Which in that group, it's common that the guitar and the bass play the same line. So you're giving everybody but the drummer, except you are because you're going. You're giving them that shuffle by your rhythm. And so I just, yeah. You I'm, said a lot with just playing. Well, I call it as, yeah, I, I just say, you know, set it up. <laughs> Again, the bass line. <laughs> so if you can find the bass line of the selection you want to play, exactly set it up. And um, jam situations, hosting jams for many years. I found out that um, it's going to be a train wreck if uh, you get five guys on the bandstand that have never played together and you go up there and you try to describe the song, you're trying to describe a Little Walter song to guys that have no idea who Little Walter is, <laughs> have no idea what the feel is, but if you just start playing, you know, if you just start playing the line, at least it's going to give them a feel. So. Um, like we were talking uh, earlier, let's say you want to play juke. You go to a jam session, you got juke all worked out, you know, and then you go on the bandstand and you're up there with, you know, a jam situation, guys you don't know, and you go, okay, 
we're going to do a shuffle in the key of E. And if you count it in, you got four guys that have a different shuffle in, in, in their mind. Mm -hmm. But even though it might um, come off a little uh, loose, you're going to be much better off just going up there and just going, key of E, it's going to be a shuffle, and just go. <laughs> you might be up there naked mm -hmm. in the beginning, but it's going to give these guys the feel, and then all of a sudden they'll trickle in, uh -huh. and the next thing you know, the song is moving along. At least you got the right feel and tempo and everything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so that's, uh, try to set it up, mm -hmm. is, is, is what I always say. Hand signals are real important too. What hand signals do you commonly, what's your bread and butter hand signals for like getting the band in, breaking the band? Um, well, there are some definite, I, that, that's probably the thing that I just, that I talk about. That's, that's my rehearsal a lot of times is actually hand signals. And um, getting the band in, uh, um, a lot of times I'll use just, you know, one, four, or five. To represent the one chord, four chord, and five chord. To let everybody know, uh, you know, where you're supposed to come in at this time, or if the song is moving, you can tell one of the guys doesn't know where he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll ask everybody uh, before going on the bandstand, please heads up, please pay attention to what I'm doing here. Watch me because I'll let you know what's going on. So. Uh, Breaks, you know, are pretty obvious. It's like... <laughs> almost uh, be like a um, conductor. conductor. Huh. Almost conduct it. Um, different things is if uh, at the end of the song, if you want the band to make a clean break, that's one thing I always tell guys is uh, at the end of the song, if I want to uh, uh, have us all go out together, I'll usually put my hand up, you know... <laughs> But if I want a clean break, I'll be, I'll say, I'll grab it mm -hmm. in the air like that. Give me a clean break, and then I'll take it out by myself. Gotcha. Um, I'll use this for, uh, um, to, uh, I don't know if a crescendo is the right word, but to uh, extend the ending of a song. Uh -huh. <laughs> So a lot of body movement and hand signals. Gotcha. I noticed that the band responds very well to body movement. You're not moving around very much. And you start to move around more and you play more aggressively, obviously the band's going to build. It's, it's interesting to watch how the band really responds to the body movement. Sometimes they overreact. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're just making a, a gesture or something and also the band breaks and it's like, no, this wasn't a break. <laughs> yeah, I was in Japan once and you know my you know normal break would bring your hand up. This is kind of like getting everybody ready to right. break. And every time I worked with this band, it was a great band. It was a wonderful band. But every time, bop, they would stop right there. Halfway up. Yeah. <laughs> it took me, I never got used to it. I ended up screwing up the, the performance a couple times because they broke like the and of, of three or something. <laughs> and uh, another uh, uh, thing with using pickup bands, and, um, you know, and this is from uh, um, years of experience and um, being able to adapt is that um, by the first or second song, I can pretty much tell what the, um, stylistically, how the, the, the band I'm working with will be their strong point. Mm -hmm. So if you get up there and, you know, and they're not a retro 50s style band, mm -hmm. I don't try to uh, whip a dead horse. I don't try to keep dragging that around. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, these guys play real on top of the beat. They play real contemporary. So I'll, I'll, I'll work the strong point and do a lot of straight beats, a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, ba -da -dum -bum -ba -dum -ba -dum boogaloos or, you know, yeah. the box shuffle, boom, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and try to utilize the strong point of the band and I will adapt to their style instead of trying to make them play what I have in my head. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's much easier that way.